The universe appears to be designed because of the fine-tuning of the universe. Scientists have discovered in recent decades that the universe is precisely tweaked to support life. That if you were to change any one of a number of factors about our universe virtually imperceptibly, any one of them, there would either be no universe or no universe that could support life. In fact, let's start with an atheist, Stephen Hawking. He put it this way. He said, if the expansion rate of the universe was different by one part in a thousand million million a second after the Big Bang, the universe would have collapsed back on itself or never developed galaxies. In other words, if the expansion rate was that infinitesimally different from the very initial creation point, none of us would be here. Now, you can't make any evolutionary argument for this. You can't say the expansion rate evolved by chance to the right rate. Why? Because this is an initial condition of the universe. This is how it started. It didn't evolve. It just started that way. It seems to me the same being that created space, matter, and time is the same being that fine-tuned the expansion rate to be precisely what it needed to be. The gravitational force, if we were to alter that by, by any more than one part in 10 to the 40th power, we wouldn't be here. What's one part in 10 to the 40th power? That's one part in one with 40 zeros following it. You say, Frank, I can't get my head around that number. I know, neither can I. Let me give you an illustration. Take a tape measure and stretch it across the entire known universe. That's a long way. Set the gravitational force at a particular inch mark on that tape measure. I realize gravity is not measured in inches, but this just gives you a scale idea in your mind. If the strength of gravity were different by one inch in either direction across a scale as wide as the entire known universe, we wouldn't be here. That's 1 in 10 to the 40th precision. I don't have enough faith to believe that that value just landed there by chance. And oh, by the way, chance. Does chance cause anything? When scientists use the word chance, do they mean it's a cause? Who caused this? Chance, he was just here. No. Chance is not a cause. Chance is a word we use to describe mathematical possibilities. Chance doesn't cause anything. In fact, when scientists use the word chance, you know what they really mean? We don't know. Look, that value right there either was designed or it wasn't. What makes more sense? Seems like it was designed. Not only are, is the universe uh, designed in this way, our solar system appears to be designed with us in mind. Let's take a look at the solar system here for a minute. Stay awake, stay awake. Here we are, third rock from the sun. If we were just a little bit closer to or a little bit further away, we couldn't survive. A little bit closer to, we'd burn up. A little bit further away, we'd freeze. We are in what scientists call the Goldilocks zone. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. It is... That's a lie. It's too hot here in the summer. The axial tilt, 23 and a half degrees. Change that slightly, we don't exist. Earth rotation, 24 hours. Change that slightly, we don't exist. The size and distance of the moon from us. Change that slightly, we don't exist. If Jupiter was not in its current orbit, we couldn't exist here. Why not? Because Jupiter is a cosmic vacuum cleaner. Its gravitational force is so strong that it attracts most of the meteors and space junk to it rather than us. In fact, take a close-up look at Jupiter here. You see these marks on Jupiter? These marks are comet fragment strikes that are bigger than the Earth. Thank God for Jupiter. Because if Jupiter wasn't there, we wouldn't be here. Saturn does the same thing for us, by the way. In fact, here's the size of the planets. Check this out. We've got Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Earth. Look at poor Pluto down here. You know, Pluto recently has been demoted as a planet. I don't know about you, but I think it's size discrimination. Take a look at this. You can hardly see Pluto. Take a look at this. That's Arcturus. That's another star in our galaxy. Here's the sun over here. Jupiter is one pixel in size on this scale. Earth is invisible. Pluto? Forget about it. All right, keep an eye on Arcturus now. Where's Arcturus now? Way over here. The sun is one pixel in size on this scale. Jupiter is invisible. Earth, Pluto, forget about them. In fact, if the Earth was the size of a golf ball, Beetlejuice here 
Look, I don't name the stars, okay? If the earth was the size of a golf ball, Beetlejuice would be five or six Empire State Buildings high. And that's just in our galaxy. That's not outside our galaxy. And the average distance between stars in our galaxy is 30 trillion miles. And all that distance is necessary for us to exist here on Earth now. Now, 30 trillion miles, how far is that? Far. Take you at least two tanks of gas and a Toyota Prius to go 30 trillion miles. And if you ever get a chance to go to Tucson, outside the city a little way, there's a desert museum. If you go there at night, if it's a clear night, you can see thousands of stars in the sky. So we're out there, and the guide says, wow, it's so clear tonight that if we look up at 903, we will see the space shuttle in orbit. I said, come on, we're not going to see the space shuttle. I mean, it's only 120 feet long. It's 350 miles up. We're not going to see it. Oh, me of little faith. At 903, the guide goes, look! And we look up in the sky about 70 degrees above the horizon. There's an object streaking across the, the western desert sky relative to us about like this. And it got right about here. It disappeared. I don't know whether Scotty beamed it up or what. Actually, what happened was, despite the fact that we were in total darkness, the space shuttle was so high up that the sun was still reflecting off of it. When it got out of the range of the sun, we couldn't see it anymore. Now, when the space shuttle was in orbit, the space shuttle was traveling at about 18,000 miles an hour. That's five miles per second. You got trouble getting to school in the morning? Take the space shuttle. You'll be here five miles a second. Think about how fast that is. Well, I did a little calculation to try and figure out how long would it take us if we could get in the space shuttle and go from our star, the sun, to another star an average distance away, 30 trillion miles. In other words, how long would it take us to go 30 trillion miles if we could go five miles per second? How long do you think it would take us? Long time, math major? Hundreds of years. It would take us 201,450 years. That means if you got in the space shuttle at the time of Christ and started traveling from our star, the sun, to another star an average distance away, in our galaxy, you've been going five miles a second for 2,000 years, you'd be less than one hundredth of the way there right now. And we're going to explore space. No, we're not. We're not going anywhere in space. We can hardly get out of our solar system. And even if we do, it's just too far and it's too dangerous. Now, how many stars are out there? The number of stars that are out there are about equivalent to the number of grains of sand on all the beaches on all the Earth. You see this picture here on the left? This is from the ground. You see this little square right here? That's that square from the Hubble Space Telescope. Those are stars, heavenly bodies. In Isaiah chapter 40, God is speaking. And what does God say? To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One. In other words, you want a comparison? You want to know what God's like? Here's what he says. Lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these stars and named them one by one? Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. You want to know who God is? Look to the heavens. What do you see when you look to the heavens? A virtual infinite expanse. Psalm 103 verse 11 says, God's love to those that fear him exceeds the height of the heavens above the earth. How high are the heavens above the earth? Stars equivalent to grains of sand on all the beaches on all the earth. 200,000 years at five miles a second between those stars. It's infinite. That's the point. But as amazing as the heavens are, they're not as amazing as you are. Why? Because the heavens aren't made in the image of God. You are.